you bought your first depth finder and now you want to know how the heck do you read it? What do all these arches and these crazy colors mean? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. How to read a depth finder. My name is Wesley Littlefield with YourBassGuy.com and today I'm going to walk you through the basics of reading a depth finder. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the cone and how the transducer actually works. So the cone of the transducer, what that term is, is because the transducer doesn't shoot just a beam straight down. It actually shoots it in a cone and it's like 30 degrees or something. I can't remember exactly what it is, but all that means is when it shoots, you're not seeing everything that's around you. You're just seeing what's within that cone and what the sonar hits and bounces back and sends to the transducer. So with that said, that's why you see arches on the screen, which is what I'm about to show you now. So you can see these arches on the screen here, here, and here. This is more than likely bait fish. This is a bigger, could be a bigger fish, like a bass suspended or something in, in the water column. You can see here that something's going down towards the bottom. And you can also, you'll notice that the way I have this specific colors and all the sensitivity and stuff. Most of it's pretty much straight out of the box. This is a soft, a little bit softer bottom with a little bit of rock because the brighter colors for this setting are harder and the darker colors are softer. So you can see that the red and oranges and yellows are showing that the bottom is kind of iffy a little bit, but I am around a lot of rock, so it can also be just a weird reading because it's hitting silt and whatever else then there's rock right below it but you'll also see this arch here there's another fish this is more than likely a whole bunch of little bait fish because i can hear them popping and flipping around me so you want to keep that in mind these arches they're not always like oh just because i see a bunch of arches it's not always a fish it's sometimes it can be a little fish sometimes it can be something in the water trash in the water You'll notice like here and here, that's more than likely like a brush pile or something because a rock pile, you would see a harder definition, uh, meaning that you would see the brighter colors pop a little bit better. And you can play with your settings. Like I said, I just got this out. I'm just actually testing this unit. So I don't have it dialed in by any means. This is setting straight out of the box, but it gives you a good idea of what to expect and you'll have to play around with what settings that you actually want to use and you prefer. You can come in and change colors, different settings, as far as how your higher frequencies and stuff. And we'll click on that and just show you what it actually changes. So here's my old settings, as you can see, and then the new ones are coming. And it's just a different frequency that, you know, it makes it, to me, it's not as clear. And that's why I'd prefer, you know, not to use it unless you're going in deeper water. Now, shoot, I'm sitting really shallow right here trying to get out of the wind. So, you, I, you know, I need a higher sensitivity and that's why I was leaving it at the 200. So that is how you read a depth finder. Very basic, basic, straight out of the box kind of stuff. You know, if you want to see more detailed look, leave a comment down below, let me know. If you want to know a little bit more about depth finders in general, I've actually got some of I where I compared some of the best step finders on the market today in the video down below me that you can click on and check out. Otherwise, I want you to always remember that education is important, but fishing is essential.